Hi everybody and welcome to Pinfinity. My name is Wesley Vanitu and in this quick tip I will show you how to use a generated blueprint to create precise modeling. So when you have uh, this type of project, uh, uh, this one I truly modeled it for a workshop I did last year. Um, as you can see, the, uh, this type of object is really precise. So um, most of the time the client will give you the, the CAD data of, of the blueprint, precise blueprint to be able to 3D model it. But if you don't uh, have this one and for whatever reason you want to, to use uh, this, uh, uh, an object like this for a personal project, you will need to have precise blueprint to, to generate the, the exact form. Because as you can see on this one, the, the the side is a little bit weird we have uh, we don't have the it's not symmetrical as you can see so of course you can directly in in a blender or any other package start 3d model to to have the the perfect shape like this but it will be much more easier to generate uh, a general outline of of the phone uh, plus the 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 profile and after that, make the profile wrap around the, the, the outside form to, to generate the, the, the perfect geometry for the form. So let me show you that really quickly. So first of all, this is uh, uh, what I create uh, for the form. This is uh, all the elements I, I will use to, to 3D model it. This is a, a real life uh, a, a specification. So as you can see, I have the, the outside here, the, the front uh, and some element of the back and uh, some buttons and logos. And as you can see, I have notes um, to, to remember what type of operation I, I will have to do uh, with these elements. So for now, we're gonna use the outline here and this one. So, let me remove that first. Okay. Let me go to a new, a new layer here. Okay. I'm going to import the SVG file. So as you can see, I have this and I have to scale it by 10 because when you import an SVG, it, it divided by 10. I don't know why. And I'm going to rotate it. So let me select this one and this one. I'm going to need the rest. Now I'm going to snap the origin to the center of this curve. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to move the normal so you can see it better. Okay, so I'm going to snap the 3D cursor here, put the origin here, and after that, I'm just going to put it a little higher. Because if I don't do that, it's going to wrap uh, around uh, this point, and it's not going to be um, to the same size of the phone. Of course, for this demo, I, I did it by high, but uh, you have to really be precise about it. Okay, I'm gonna keep it that way. And now, really important, you have to uh, the two origin uh, uh, has to be at the same place to uh, uh, to make the the, the curve uh, modifier works properly. So let me snap the 3D cursor here. I'm gonna snap this one here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick extrusion of this curve like this, and I'm going to reduce the the preview like this. And with that, I'm just going to convert it to mesh and rotate it 90 degrees. And uh, as you can see, I rotate it in object mode, so I have to rescale the rotation and the scale um, to reset, excuse me. And I'm going to convert this to 3D. So I only have the, the outline. So now I have to do is to select this one, go to array and choose fit curve and select curve 001. 
So it's going to take the length of the of the outline and select the curve. And as you can see, I have it wraps around the 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 curve properly. I just have to do some tweaking here for the array. So let me merge everything. I'm going to reduce it to 0.1 millimeters because it's, it's the real life size uh, spec. So I have to reduce it uh, a lot to, uh, to make it uh, merge properly. And when you do the, the, this operation, you will have at some point. Let me see if I can find it. Unless you precisely, uh, um, unless you put the exact size, the exact size here to make it close perfectly, you will have some some opening somewhere. But I just can see it for now. Let me. Okay, let me put a subdivision on top of this. Where is it? Oh. oh, this is it, as you can see here. So because you just cannot uh, predict uh, what what's the perfect size to, to make it um, to make it fit like this, you will have to do it manually. So let me zoom really close and be closer and closer like this. And you will have this. And when you're absolutely done with your um, with the profile and you show sure it's the perfect dim dimension and perfect size, all you have to do, let me remove the modifier, the subdivision, you have to collapse everything into a new mesh and select let me, the open one and you're going to bridge every, everything and choose merge like this and remove it. And make sure everything is okay everywhere. And as you can see, you will have the perfect profile. Of course, I put it, let me crease the hedge here. And this is it, as you can see. You'll have the, the proper profile uh, for your phone and it's going to be absolutely precise. It's going to be absolutely precise because you, uh, you upfront uh, uh, generate the, the proper outline and the proper dimension everywhere. And all you have to do is to import everything and start and start your 3D model. Let me show you an example here. For example, the, the, the big plus of this method is, uh, let me show you that. No, I'm going to open, this one is an imported file. Let me go to the, to the asset parts. Okay. The big plus of this is you can uh, keep it as a curve and put thickness on it. As you can see, this is a curve. And I had thickness and, uh, and a bevel directly here. Let me change to modeling. As you can see, I have uh, uh, an extrusion and resolution plus a depth. And I don't need to convert this into a mesh. And the big benefit of, of having a curve is uh, it's already properly UV and wrap. So if you want to just put uh, a texture in it, it, it would work perfectly. So here too, is it, it's a curve. I just, and that's why, uh, as you can see here, I have a gap. It's because, uh, uh, as you know, uh, elements uh, are 
um, isn't always just uh, perfectly uh, perfectly near each other. So uh, you need to include a gap, and it will uh, allows you to have a much more precise model. And let me show you this one. I have to, of course, convert it to to be able to make the Boolean operation. And here, as you can see. I have a boolean operation too so if i go to edit mode there is nothing and i have booleans everywhere as you can see a boolean operation here a boolean here so uh for this type of project this is the 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 really big plus you can have a really precise uh, 3d model with really little effort so i really encourage you to use this technique for if you are uh, on surface object like this to 3d model it will save you trust me a lot of time so this is it i hope it was informative so as as always if you have any question don't hesitate to contact me on instagram uh, at pen underscore affinity and on my emails info.penfinity.com and uh, on the next video i will uh, do a time lapse of the uh, the modeling of this entire phone and uh, this is it for now so i hope it was informative and uh, see you soon people